The M3 Ultra Max Studio has been out for a couple of months now, but there's something that's been eating away at me. At the end of last year, I did a video upgrading the M2 generation of Max Studio with Polysoft's up to eight terabyte SSD upgrades. But since the arrival of the M3 Ultra, both the guys at Polysoft and myself have been wondering if there's anything different about this new generation. It's a totally different chipset, but can you still use the same storage upgrades? Well, today we're gonna find out. We're doing a little beta testing. This is the Studio Drive M2, now affectionately, hopefully, the M3 installation manual. And today we're gonna be attempting to put eight terabytes of storage in our M3 Ultra Max Studio over here. Now, Polysoft will send you a kit that comes with a really rather nice screwdriver. We've got a pick, and here at the bottom is the SSD modules themselves. Now, if you watched my video last year, you'll remember that Apple's storage modules are not in fact SSDs. These NAND modules, which Polysoft have effectively recreated from scratch, are basically just NAND carriers. There's no SSD controller on here because that's handled by the Apple Silicon chip itself. And that's why you'll notice they're labeled 00 and 01. The order in which you install these drives is very important. And that brings us to our first complication. If we flip through the instruction manual that Polysoft provides that will show us how to do this upgrade, what you'll notice is that the M2 Max and the M2 Ultra actually have different storage arrangements. 00 is on the left on M2 Max, 00 is on the right on M2 Ultra. Given that this is completely untested, the M3 Ultra, I'm gonna assume that it's the same as the M2 Ultra, so that's what we're gonna try, but there might be some trial and error involved today. But let's get into this upgrade right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Delete Me, the hands-free subscription that will find and remove your personal information that's being sold online. I've been using Delete Me for a while, and in just a couple of days, they generated a report that found my data on all sorts of data brokers and then worked on my behalf to get them removed. But my favorite part about them is that data removal is an ongoing process. They're constantly updating their list of sites and brokers, working around the clock to check for new places your data might pop up. They even monitor the sites that your data has already been removed from to make sure that it doesn't get repopulated again. This is all part of what makes Delete Me the ultimate protection for your phone numbers, addresses, email addresses, and more. So keep your data out of the unscrupulous hands of data brokers by learning more about Delete Me. Plus, right now, if you check out the link in the description below, you can save 20% off consumer plans. A big thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. All right, now before we get started with the installation, the first thing that you need to do when you're doing an upgrade like this is back up your data. Because remember, these are not SSDs. This is not like a normal situation where you could take it out of one machine and plug it into another to access your data. Once this module is removed from the computer, nothing else will ever be able to read it. It has to be reformatted and repaired to the SOC in order for it to work. Having gone through and made a time machine backup of my one terabyte SSD, we can now start with the installation. And the first part of that, my most favorite part of this is getting through the adhesive on the underside of the Mac Studio. Aha, there we go. So my preferred method of choice is to stick a little guitar pick in there and just kind of go right around the edges. Oh, that's honestly very satisfying. Now I'm gonna nip this in the bud because I know that some of you guys are already thinking, oh no, don't do this, it's gonna void your warranty. It actually doesn't and I've tested it myself. I've opened up a Mac Studio and taking it to the Apple store, it does not void your warranty. Now, of course, Apple puts this adhesive strip over the actual screw head, so shout out to that. And we're in. So as you can see, the installation process is not actually that difficult. There's four T10s to take off the bottom case, and then there's four more here on the power supply. And then if we pull off this little tiny plastic cover, we have a couple of more T10s to disconnect the power supply from the main board. But be careful to not just yank up on this thing right away because there are two connections to the board here. Did that just pull out the thing? Are you kidding me? 
Well, I was about to say that you need to be careful pulling this board out because there are two connections on it. But what actually just happened here is that this connector pulled itself right off the board. I mean, look at this. You can see the two metal pins that go inside the connector and then there's these little clips on the outside. So it looks like it just kind of slides over top like that and connects to the board that way. But that, that is very flimsy. Be careful of that. Don't lose it. Don't get it lost. But anyway, now that our power supply is removed, we'll switch our T10 for a T5 Torx bit and we'll go around the side to remove the screws on this frame piece. Okay, there we go. And now's where we gotta be careful. So as you can see, our left slot is populated with our NAND module, but if we consult our instructions, you'll recall that the M2 Max slot 00 is on the left, M2 Ultra 00 is on the right. But the module being on the left confuses me because as far as I'm aware, the module that should be populated first is slot 00. That implies that slot 00 here is on the left but on the M2 Ultra, supposedly, it was on the right. Now, I pulled up my original teardown from 2022 with the M1 Max versus the M1 Ultra, and it certainly appears that the module is on the other side, but I couldn't find a picture of the M2 Ultra. So what I'm gonna do is break with our instruction manual and go on the assumption that the populated slot is 00. Oh. Well, that's new. Normally over the NAND modules is just a little bit of tape, but now it looks like there might be some sort of like a heat spreader here. And look at that, underneath there's a little pillow. Wow. So now we'll go ahead and put these new modules in. They very helpfully labeled them, but I also just noticed that they actually engraved Luke 00 and Luke 01 on the PCB. Thanks guys. They're custom built just for me. That's so sweet. In you get, put that one in. Now you'll notice there's no screw on this side because the slot was empty. But fortunately, Polysoft thought of that and they provide an extra screw. All right, so that should be everything. We'll go ahead and reassemble the device and move on to the next step. So now we basically need to pair our new NAND modules to the SOC. And to do that, we're gonna be using Apple Configurator, which you're probably familiar with if you've watched the channel before. But the setup for this is as follows. We're gonna plug a USB-C cord into the port closest to the ethernet jack, and we'll plug the other end into our MacBook, and then I'm also going to connect a display to the Mac Studio just so that we can see what's happening. And now we need to put the Mac Studio in DFU mode, and the way to do this is to grab our power cord, we're gonna hold the power button for a few seconds, and then we're gonna plug in the Mac Studio while still holding the power button, and hopefully it'll show up. I see the allow accessory to connect, and there we have our DFU Mac Studio. Then we can just right click on that and click restore. And at this point, all we can really do is wait to see if I did it right. Ah, what do you mean no space left on device? It's eight terabytes, what are you talking about? Yeah, so using Apple Configurator to restore an SSD upgrade in a Mac is always a little bit fraught. It very rarely works on the first try. And so my initial thought here was to switch the order of the SSDs in case I had gotten it wrong. However, I got the same error again. I was at first very confused and then it occurred to me, what if the device running out of storage is my MacBook? And sure enough, I didn't have enough room to unzip Mac OS because there's 126 gigabytes of system data on my 256 gigabyte MacBook. Thanks Apple, that makes a lot of sense. So anyway, I swapped out the MacBook, put the SSDs back to how they were originally, and tried it again, and this time, we were successful. So now all that was left to do was restore the time machine backup that we made earlier, and we're done. Eight terabytes of storage are now showing on our Mac Studio, and if it weren't for my little blunder with a MacBook that ran out of storage space, we would have actually gotten this on the first try. It turned out that my guess about the storage modules was in fact correct, so definitely keep that in mind if you're going to carry out an upgrade like this. It'll make your life a lot easier. But I also wanted to test 
how much faster our new SSD would be compared to the old one. The original one terabyte drive has a write speed of 6,000 with a read speed of 5,000 megabytes per second. Certainly not slow, but our new drive bumps that up significantly on the write speed to 7,600 with a slight bump on the read as well. So this is a pretty good showing. So fundamentally, this is really good news because it means that companies that are making these reproduction NAND modules don't have to completely start from scratch. And while it's possible that individual NANDs themselves might need to be switched out between M2 and M3 Ultra, the base board itself is still the same, which is better for you, less cost, more compatibility. That's just kind of the way that this goes. And what it means is that if you're configuring a Mac Studio, you can completely ignore the storage part of the configurator. And you don't have to give Apple $2,200 to get eight terabytes. PolySoft solution comes in at less than half the cost. It's under a thousand dollars. And I think that's frankly a no brainer, but I know what you might be thinking. Eight terabytes is not the maximum amount of storage that you can fit in a Mac Studio. You can go up to 16 now. And at $4,600, I can imagine an alternative would be a lot more appealing for a lot of people. But there is a slight catch. The new 16 terabyte configuration, as well as the eight terabyte configuration for the M4 Pro Mac Mini require two terabyte NAND modules. The reason that there's two NAND modules in this Mac Studio is because each one has four one terabyte NANDs on it. And that limitation was true across the board, whether it's a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio. But now with these new devices and higher density NAND, well, we could be able to get ourselves some very significant upgrades. The problem is those NAND aren't publicly available yet. It takes a while, like months to possibly even a year before the public is able to buy the same NAND that Apple uses. So we're gonna have to sit tight for a little bit on that, but rest assured, once those are available, I will have a video on them. So of course, a big thanks to you guys for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Leave a like down below and don't forget to comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.